Today in the Smugglers Room, we're completing part two of our vintage action figure display case and getting one step closer to providing freedom for all those oppressed toys living in darkness behind cardboard walls. That's coming up. What's up you awesome geeks? I'm Brian and welcome to the Smugglers Room. The show where each week, this chubby geek tries to build something ridiculous and hopefully inspire you to take on your own wild and crazy project. Okay, can I just take a quick second to say thank you? Because we just crossed the 1500 subscriber mark and I am completely blown away by your support. I wanna give a quick special thanks to Bill and Brittany Duran of Punished Props, as well as Bob from I Like To Make Stuff for recently talking about our channel and for all of you that have come over from theirs. But most importantly, I wanna thank you guys. You that keep coming back every single week since the beginning to give us support to watching this chubby geek every week do something ridiculous. And if you haven't joined our community of smugglers, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell and you'll be geeking out with the rest of us every week. Today is part two of four of our vintage action display case. And if you haven't watched part one, give that a look as well to catch up. Now I'm a big fan of naming all the parts and components that are gonna go into this project. So I'm calling this the Security Monitoring System Interface, otherwise known as SimSI, or SimSci, or something like that. But there's a lot of stuff to get to, so let's just dive right in. Now, to get started, I'm gonna work with a piece of laser cut MDF, as well as a hard drive motor and the resin cast of an astromech droid socket that you've seen me use before. I like to start by laying out some of the pieces I'm thinking about using. It, I know it's going to change overall as the project progresses, but this gives me at least the look or the foundation of what I'm gonna build off of. I'm kind of wondering if there is such a thing as a Greebly artist. I mean, can you imagine a Greebly art critic? I simply love how he captures the essence of MDF and aluminum. It's breathtaking. Anyway, uh, next we need to assemble the box that's going to house this part of the project. We're gonna use super straightforward construction here. No fancy joinery or anything like that. We're just gonna do butt joints with wood glue and clamps to put it all in place and then let the glue set. While the glue dries on our box, I decided I wanted to swap out the hard drive motor I picked for another one. So I go to my bin O'Greeblies and I find another hard drive motor that actually has a magnet in it, as well as another aluminum piece that actually has a hole that I can use a bolt and nut to secure that in place on the project later. Once the glue is dry on our box, we go ahead and strip away any of the squeeze out and then start the sanding process. I just wanna make sure I round over all the outside corners. Next, I also built a small frame out of MDF and styrene. I used the styrene on top of the MDF this time so I wouldn't have to spend so much time sealing before painting. I'm not entirely sure I'm saving a whole lot of time by doing it this way, but I hate to seal MDF, so it's worth it to me. So once we get the little frame finished, then we do a quick test fit before gluing. Now it's time for our first round of surface level greeblies. And based on the laser cut pattern, it looks like there's a place for several knobs. So I need to drill out several holes for a series of aluminum rods that will actually hold the knobs. Because the rod is aluminum, I'm able to cut them on my bandsaw really easily. I use a file to clean up the edges, and then it's just a matter of securing them in place with a small finishing hammer. Next, it's a little bit of airbrushing. I used mostly black and some aluminum to do some highlights, and I did this across the entire front panel. I also busted out a bit of copper that I had and used that to airbrush over the entire center droid socket. I went over the whole thing and did this really rough, but I wanted to use the airbrush to help me with some of the weathering. Next, we installed all the knobs on our panel. 
and I went ahead and swapped out two of them for a more brushed aluminum look. And that seemed to match better of everything I was doing than the original pair I picked out. We were then able to slip our sealed and painted box over the top of our front panel display. We carefully moved it in position and then used a tape measure to make sure that all four corners were the same depth. At this point, we were able to do a quick fit test against the work that we did in the last project. Now I do want to dress this design up a bit further and I want to add some red with a piece of acrylic, some aluminum rails that I have from I have no idea where, as well as this strange piece that I've got from a galaxy far, far away. I think this is a perfect opportunity to tell you that most of the stuff that I use on these projects are found. Yes, there's some stuff that have been cut on a laser or cut on the x -carve. But for a vast majority, it's things that have come from electronics or old projectors or cameras or VCRs. And for you younger audience out there, VCRs are things we used to watch that had videotapes. Wow, I just really dated myself. The point is, I've said it before, before you throw it away, take it apart. You never know what you're gonna find. Now, back in the build, I simply glued the red acrylic piece into place so that you could partially see through it and then attach the silver greedly to the front. Then I added the aluminum rails to the corner to add some depth and interest. The interest that I'm talking about is the leg from my super cheap camera tripod. I took the leg plus a few other bits and added that to design. Remember that whole uh, taking things apart? Well, there you go. I also save every circuit board I can get my hands on. They make interesting guts for this type of thing. This brings us to the electronic side of this project. Adding LEDs to props or projects is always a good idea. This particular circuit board had the perfect size holes for some red LEDs. All I had to do was press the red LED into the slot and then go ahead and solder on a resistor. That was for the positive side. For the negative leads, I just wired directly onto my black wire. After I got everything soldered up, I slipped on some shrink tubing to cover all of those solder joints. And this helps prevent from any kind of shorting that would happen between your positive and negative leads. Next, I connected all of the leads to a nine volt battery just to test it. Then I was able to flip the circuit board over and screw it into place on the back of the box. The red LEDs light up the circuit board behind the acrylic. And now when you walk up to the panel, you've got a little bit of depth and you can see the inner workings of our panel design. Okay, geeks, we're almost done. This last step is just adding a lot more detail to the panel, and then we're gonna go ahead and test fit it to the project we've already completed and see where we are. Now I know what you're saying. Hey Brian, man, what gives? You didn't do any additional weathering on that panel. And you're correct. There's actually a lot of detail and weathering and things that are missing from making this complete. Like the iPod dock that we're gonna do next week. And then we'll be one step closer to getting this project complete. Now go out there and rescue an old VCR from being just another piece of junk buried in a landfill. And when they ask you, what are you doing with that? You just tell them, you're building something out of nothing.